Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another AWS hands-on tutorial. In this video, we'll work with AWS Batch. AWS Batch is comprised of a suite of services which enable developers, scientists, and engineers to easily and efficiently run hundreds of thousands of batch computing jobs on AWS. AWS Batch dynamically provisions the type and quantity of compute resources based on the volume and specific resource requirements of the batch jobs which are submitted. AWS Batch plans, schedules, and executes batch computing workloads using ECS, EKS, and Fargate with options for spot instances. Before we dive in and start working with AWS Batch, there are some terms you should be familiar with. First, there's the compute environment, and an AWS Batch compute environment is a collection of compute resources on which jobs are executed. AWS Batch supports two types of compute environments, managed compute environments, which are provisioned and managed by AWS, as well as unmanaged compute environments, which are managed by the customer. Next are job queues. When you submit an AWS Batch job, you submit it to a particular job queue where the job resides until it's scheduled onto a compute environment. You associate one or more compute environments with a job queue. Then there's the job definition, which describes the job to be executed, its parameters, environment variables, compute requirements, and other information that's used to optimize execution of a job. Job definitions are defined in advance of submitting a job. And of course, there's the batch job itself, which is a unit of work such as a shell script or a Linux executable or a Docker container image that you submit on AWS Batch. It runs as a containerized application on AWS Fargate or EC2 resources in your compute environment. In a typical workflow, AWS Batch starts with the user-defined batch job definition which includes an application image and associated IAM role. Then the job is submitted to an AWS Batch job queue until it's executed via the batch schedule in the compute environment. Now, with those fundamental concepts out of the way, let's jump into the AWS Batch console and get hands-on. To get started in the AWS Batch dashboard, we see I have no compute environments and no job queues. And if I go into job definitions in the menu, we see I have no job definitions defined. So back in the menu, I'll click compute environments, then create. For the compute environment configuration, we'll use Fargate and I'll give the environment a name. For the service role, I'll use the default AWS service role for batch, click next. And for max vCPUs, I'll enter two and click next. I'll take the default VPC, the selected subnets, and the default security group. Now, before I click next here, I'm gonna go into the VPC console and modify the default security group and add some inbound rules. First, I'll add an inbound rule for HTTP from anywhere from HTTPS from anywhere and a rule for custom TCP from anywhere and save the rules. Now this will allow us to pull our Docker images. Now I'll go back to the batch console, click next, review the configuration and create the compute environment. Here we see the status is creating, the state is enabled the type is managed, and the provisioning protocol is Fargate. Now, if I go back to the dashboard, we see my batch compute environment. Next, back in the menu, I'll select job queues, then create. For the orchestration type, again, I'll use Fargate, and I'll give the job queue a name. For priority, I'll leave the default of one. There is no scheduling policy, 
and for the connected compute environments, I'll select my batch compute environment. Then create the job queue. Here we see the state is enabled and the status is creating. Now, if I go back to the dashboard and refresh the job queues, we see my batch job queue. Next, back in the menu, I'll select job definitions, click create. Again, for the orchestration type, we'll use Fargate. I'll give the definition a name. And I'll leave the execution timeout and scheduling policies blank. In the Fargate platform configuration, I'll enable assign public IP. And this will allow external public traffic to access the IP assigned to this job definition. And this combined with the inbound rules we added to the default security group will allow us to pull those Docker images. For ephemeral storage, I'll enter 25. Then for the execution role, which is the task execution role, which grants ECS permissions to make AWS API calls, we can see by default, I have no execution role. So I'll jump over to IAM and under roles, I'll create a new role. The service will be the elastic container service. And the use case will be an elastic container service task. Click next. And here I'll select the Amazon ECS task execution role policy, which we see allows actions for ECR and logs. Click next, give the role name. And here we see the effect is to allow the ECS task service to perform the STS assume role action. Now I'll create the role. Then back in the batch console, I'll refresh the execution role and select my ECS task role and click next. In the container configuration for the image, I'll be using the Amazon Linux image from Docker Hub. Here for the command, which is the command that you want to execute when your job is run. So when the job in your container is provisioned and I'll leave the default echo hello world. For parameters, I'll add a parameter just so that we see it pass to the container. Then under the environment configuration, for the job role configuration, I'll select my ECS task role and leave the defaults for the vCPUs in memory, then click next. I'll leave the defaults on this screen and click next and then create the job definition. And under the container properties, here we see the image is the Amazon Linux image and the command is to echo hello world. Now in the menu, I'll select jobs and submit new job. I'll give the job a name. And for the job definition, I'll select my batch job definition. And for the job queue, I'll select my batch job queue. Click next. And in the override screen, I'll leave the default empty values for the job overrides. And in the container overrides, again, I'll leave the default values. Click next. And create the job. Now, if we jump back into the dashboard, here we see one job was submitted. And if I refresh, it's moved from submitted to pending and is now in the runnable state. If I refresh again, we can see the job is starting. And refreshing again, we now see it's in running state. And after a few minutes, we see the job has succeeded. So I'll go ahead and click on it, then select my batch job,
And in the job configuration, we see the parameter we passed in. And in the container details tab, we see the image and the command. And if we go into the job attempts tab and then open the log stream, we see the results of executing the echo command. Okay, so that was a simple demo of creating a batch compute environment, a job queue, a job definition, and submitting a job which just executes the echo command. In the next demo, I'll create a Python application which reads data from an object in S3 and persists the data in a DynamoDB table. And we'll create a Docker image for that application, push it to ECR, and that's the container image we'll use in the demo. So to get started, I'm gonna launch a Cloud9 environment. Here I'll click Create Environment, give it a name, select an instance type, and then create. And after a few minutes, my Cloud9 environment has been created. So I'll go ahead and open it. And the first thing I want to do in the bash shell is to execute an S3 API command to create a bucket. Now I'll create a data.json file and paste in our data, which is a list of contact information and save the file. Now I'll push the JSON file to S3. And if we jump into the S3 console, we see the bucket and our data.json file. Now back in Cloud9, I'll create the Python script, which will import Boto3 and JSON. Here I'll instantiate an instance of an S3 client and create a variable for the bucket name pointing to the bucket we just created. Then I'll instantiate an instance of a DynamoDB client and create a variable for the table name. So in order for this to work, I'll need a DynamoDB table with the name of my demo app table. So back in the bash shell, I'll execute a command to create the table. Then jump into DynamoDB and we see the table was created. Then back in the code, we see I'll execute the get object method on the S3 client, passing in the bucket name and the key to the data.json file. Then I'll get the body from the S3 response and load the response data into a contacts dictionary variable. Then I'll loop through the items in the dictionary, each time through getting the current value, and then loop through the contact data for that item. Then inside the loop for the contact items, I'll create variables for the contact index, which will be the value of the key, and then variables for the first name, last name, email, and cell of the contact. And finally, I'll call the put item method on the DynamoDB client, specifying the table name and the item that I want to insert. Next, I'll create a Docker file. The Docker file will get its base image from Python 3.7.16. It'll run an app get update, an app get install for unzip Python 3 and pip, and it will use pip to install Boto 3. Here I'll set the workdir to slash app and copy the script.py file to the workdir. And finally, there's a command to execute Python, passing it the script.py script. Now I'll go ahead and save the file. And before we can create an image and upload it to ECR, we need an ECR repo. So I'll execute an ECR create repository command, then jump into the ECR dashboard and we see the repository. So I'll select the repository and then view the push commands. I'll copy the first command, go back to cloud nine and execute it. Then I'll get the second command and execute that to run a Docker build. Then get the next command 
and execute that to tag the image. Then finally, execute the command to push the image to ECR. Now if we go back to ECR, go into the repo, we see the latest image. Okay, with our image in ECR, now we can jump back into the batch console and create our new batch job. For this new job, I'm going to use my existing batch compute environment. Then in job queues, since this uses my batch compute environment, I'll use this queue as well. Then under job definitions, I'll click create. Again, I'll use Fargate as the orchestrator. I'll give the job definition a name. I'll leave the execution timeout and scheduling priority blank. And under Fargate platform configuration, again, I'll assign a public IP. I'll enter 25 for ephemeral storage. And for the execution role, I want to select my ECS task role. However, before I do that, I'm going to jump back into IAM go into my ECS task role, which currently only has a policy for Amazon ECS task execution role policy, which allows actions for ECR and logs. So I need to add a permission to attach a policy for S3, since we're going to get our JSON file from the S3 bucket. And for the demo, I'll just select full access. And we'll add a policy for DynamoDB since we'll be persisting data in our table. Now I'll add the permissions, jump back into the batch console, select the task role, click next. And here I'll change the image to the image in our ECR repo. So I'll jump back into ECR, copy the URI, and paste that in. Here I'll leave the default command for echo hello world. This time I won't use a parameter since the application isn't going to use it. And for the job configuration role, I'll choose my ECS task role. Then click next. Next. And create the job definition. Now in the menu, I'll click jobs and submit a new job. I'll give it a name. Select the job definition, which will be my contacts job definition, and the job queue for my batch job queue. Then click Next. In the container override section, I'll change the command to override the echo hello world. to be echo hello from AWS batch. I'll leave the defaults for the vCPUs in memory, click next, and create the job. Now if we jump back in the dashboard and refresh, we see our job is now in runnable state. If we refresh again, we see it's starting. And if we refresh again, after a few minutes, we see it's in running state. And now we see it succeeded. So if we jump back into our DynamoDB table, explore table items, and run a scan, we don't see any items. And I did this on purpose. So I want to jump back into the batch console and go into our second job. And in container details, remember we passed in an echo hello from AWS batch command, which will override the command in the container. And if we jump back into Cloud9, remember our default command is to execute the Python script. But in batch, since we passed in an override command, the batch script wasn't executed. And if we go into job attempts and open the log stream, we see the result of our echo execution, hello from AWS batch.
Now, let's go ahead and make some modifications to our job in order to execute the batch script. So back in the batch console, if I select the job definitions and select my contacts job def and click create revision, then next I'll delete the command then scroll down and click next next and create the job definition and here we see we have a second revision of my contacts job def which has no command so now I'll click jobs and if I select the existing my contacts job and click clone we'll see that here I can't select the updated job definition so I'll go back to jobs and submit a new job here under job definition I'll choose the second revision of my contacts job def and the job queue click next I won't override the command this time click next and create the job now if we jump back in the dashboard refresh we see the job is starting if we refresh again after a few minutes we see it's running and after a few minutes we see it succeeded so let's go into the job click job attempts open a log stream and we see HTTP status codes of 200. So now let's jump back into DynamoDB and run a scan again. And we see our three contacts were added. Okay, so right now we're in pretty good shape. We have three jobs which have successfully executed. However, we've submitted all the jobs manually. And in a batch job, that's probably not the way you wanna trigger your job execution. So in this final demo, what I'm going to do is create an event bridge event rule which will trigger the job when an object is created in the s3 bucket so the first thing i'm going to do is jump over to s3 and in the bucket i'm going to delete the existing object in the bucket then i'm going to go into the bucket properties scroll down and under amazon event bridge i'll click edit and then enable send notifications to Amazon event bridge for all events in this bucket and save changes. Now I'll jump over to the event bridge console, click on rules and create a rule. I'll give the rule a name. This will be a rule with an event pattern and click next then scroll down and edit the event pattern. Here I'll paste in the JSON, which has a source of AWS S3 and a detail type of object created for our bucket. And I'll click next. For the target, I'll select batch job queue. And here I need to specify the job queue ARN, so I'll jump over to batch, go into the job queue, and grab the ARN, and paste that in. Then I need the name or ARN of the job definition. So I'll jump back over to batch, click on the job definition. This will be the second revision of my contacts job def. Copy the ARN, paste that in, and give the job a name. For the execution role, I'll allow EventBridge to create a new role and click Next, then click Next, and create the rule. Now if we go into the rule, we see the event pattern for object created in our bucket with the target being my contacts job with an arm to my batch job queue and the new role. So now I'm going to jump back into Cloud9, and in the JSON file, I'm going to modify this to have a new contact. Then I'll push the object to S3. 
Now, if we go to S3, refresh, we see our object. And if we go into AWS Batch, into the dashboard, and refresh, we see our job is in starting status. Now it's running. And now it's succeeded. And if we go back to DynamoDB and run a new scan, we see our new contact was added. And going back to EventBridge into monitoring, I'll filter on one hour and shortly we should see our invocation and triggered rule. And here we see our one invocation and triggered rule. So that concludes this demo on integrating AWS Batch with EventBridge. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.